Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. This second letter to the Corinthians is actually a, a difficult letter. If you've, if you've read this letter, it's a difficult one to decipher. And, and there's a lot of reasons why that's true. First of all, the tone changes in this letter. Oftentimes we hear scripture passages from 2 Corinthians at weddings. We hear uh, scripture readings about love. A lot of that happens throughout this text. But it goes, it bounces between deep love and angry rebuke. Paul writes in this letter and it bounces between those. And, and so it's a little bit unique in that, in that setting. It also isn't necessarily written in a logical fashion for contemporary readers like ourselves. And so we get challenged with that at times as well. And some scholars actually say that 2 Corinthians was uh, perhaps several letters pulled together. And so that explains some of that disjointedness that we were just talking about. But what 2 Corinthians talks about and what it does share with us is profound. It talks about the apostolic mission, the ministry of the apostles to which we fall, to which we are a part of as Christ followers. We are apostles of Christ. And so it says these things without any doubt in this book that's a little bit confusing for us. It tells us how the gospel is to be communicated. It doesn't, it doesn't waver from that. It tells us exactly how to communicate the gospel. And it defends. It defends the ministry of Christ while seeking reconciliation for those that are struggling, those that are in disagreement and dispute with one another. Paul's very quick to make sure to, to defend the ministry and then also try to seek re, uh, reconciliation. Another theme for apostles and for us is that uh, they spend a lot of time talking about raising funds for the poor and caring for those that are hurting and struggling. And there is a section too that talks about the competition that Paul is facing and how some are claiming that they're disciples of God and yet they are not speaking of Christ. Instead, they are hurting the people of Corinth. And so Paul's there to challenge that at every turn. There was abuse of the people of Corinth and Paul said, we can't have this in the name of God. And so he speaks to that. But one of the biggest themes, and the theme I'd like us to talk about today, is about what it means to live in an authentic Christian community. Authentic Christian community. Let's, let's think about that phrase for a minute. That is what Paul's speaking about almost entirely through the ups and downs of this letter. Authentic Christian community. The first word, to be authentic, to be real, to be who you are, who God made you to be. One of the, uh, one of the arguments that I've heard from people who aren't churchgoers or go very rarely to church or, or have no desire to go to church at all is because they feel like they'll be judged when they sit in the pews. They would be surrounded by a bunch of perfect people who have it all figured out and know exactly what Christ has in store for them and they don't feel like they'd fit in. I'm not sure if you feel this way, but I don't fall into that category. I don't have it all figured out. I wonder every day what God has in store for me. And so... My argument back to that individual or those folks is to say that our church is actually filled with people that are authentic and that are sinners. You'll be surrounded with people that make mistakes, that long to hear the good news, and that are real. And one of the blessings of being a pastor in this particular faith community is that probably the number one thing that I hear from people who come and 
and join us even for a short time is that they felt welcomed. They felt the hospitality of this place through you. And so I commend you for that. And I pray that that continues because it's through that work of being authentic that people understand that we can be Christ followers and not be perfect. Because none of us are perfect. Authentic Christian community. To be Christian, to follow Christ. Nowhere in there does it say again to be perfect. Instead, it says that we, that we focus on what we would hope Christ would want us to do with our lives. To treat each other with respect. To care for the poor. To walk hand in hand with those that need comforting. That need care and consolation. And then, the final word is community. To live in community. We as human beings were not meant to live on our own. To be all alone in this world. We're built to live in community. We're lived to... We were born and, and, and we are here to work together. We can accomplish so much more as a whole group than we can even on our own. And yet, one of the continued criticisms of the church is that we are not welcoming of others. That we don't welcome people into our midst. Or they feel uncomfortable coming through those doors because the community is so close-knit that we do not think outside of ourselves. So when we say authentic Christian community, we don't mean just simply this group gathered here today and no one else is welcomed. Now, I had the privilege, and I, I've shared this before on occasion, but I, I've had the privilege of serving at Bible camps I was a camp counselor for many years. And, and I had the privilege of working with kids who came to camp every year. And, and some who just experienced it uh, at one time or another. And this summer, we have a tremendous amount of people that are actually going from this congregation, friends and families and, and members from this congregation that are going to Bible camp. They're experiencing all sorts of different camps. And one in particular uh, is Camp House. And I've been asked a few times, why is that so important? Why does that matter? And it, and it wasn't from someone who said we shouldn't do it. They just are curious because they've never been to camp before. And so they ask, well, why, why, why is this so popular? Why does this seem to draw people to this experience? We have 112 people going to Camp House alone this summer. And some are already there. Uh, including Pastor Adam. That's why he's not here right now. So why? The reason is that it's an authentic Christian community. That in that time that you go to camp, where you go to Bible camp, you get to experience something that sometimes is hard to get in your regular daily routine. You get to step out of what you do every day. You don't have the, the burden of cell phones or television or even the newspaper. You get, to get, you get to be together with others and you work towards a common goal. To grow in your faith. To build things. Now, we are very fortunate in this congregation because of this experience, and we have people from all different generations that go to the camp uh, together, that particular one. And, and one of the things that I find that warms my heart every time I go to camp in this experience is because even those adults who go up there to, to build something, to, to, to renovate something, to to help the camp by painting or by shingling or by building bunk beds. It's great work. It's mission work. It's, it's work that helps other people to experience Bible camp. But that's not what they're building. And then I think about our kids 
who go up there and, and a lot of their focus is to have a lot of fun, right? And, and they have a lot of fun. They get to go swimming and, and they, they get to sit in on really fascinating Bible studies with their pastors. I, that's top of the list, I'm sure, for all of them, right? They get to play games. They get to work together on projects and they get to work side by side with other adults on these work projects. But that's not what they're building either. And then we even have families who go up with just little ones. And, and they, they do the same. They get to participate in worship and, and, and some of our Bible studies. And, and they get to eat together in, in the lodge and, and sweat together and paint together. And, and, they're, and they're working hard to do those things. And, and they're building those things. But, but that, again, isn't the greatest thing that's being built. What's being built in the midst of that week together in all of those generations forming and, and talking and, and praying together and working on things, they're forming an authentic Christian community. They're not judging each other for what they saw them do at school. They're not being held accountable for perhaps uh, anything that happened in their lives. They're just meeting each other where they're at. They're working together. What we've seen from that experience is that, yeah, bunk beds get built, and they're great. And cabins get painted, and that's wonderful and needed. But what really happens is that the body of Christ is being built. Our kids come back so excited to go back to camp the next year and be with those same people that some have a countdown on their phone that they start right when they get back from camp to count down the days when they get to go again next year because they want to be with those people. It's not about a building. It's not about the water. It's not about the the color of the paints. It's not about any of those things. It's about the fact that in the midst of those experiences, Christ is present. And I think Christ is present and almost tangible in the sense that they can feel it. It's a Christian, authentic Christian community. They get exposed to that in a week. But we have that same opportunity and experience every day of our lives. Every opportunity that we gather together to worship God in this place on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. But we also have that opportunity to be an authentic Christian community in every day of our lives. And in every way that we worship God. Especially outside of this place where we can reach out to other people and they can see that we are Christians by our, our authenticity, by the fact that they are a part of our community, by the fact that we prioritize relationships over stuff, where we recon recognize that this conversation of consolation and comfort isn't just for us, but it is our calling to share that all God's people, whether they belong to our church or they belong to the church down the street or whether they don't belong to a church at all. I am so thankful that this congregation gives our young people and our families and our adults an opportunity to do this experience together because I think that it plants seeds in us and in our young people that will carry on for generations to come. And I think our work in this community does the very same thing. I have an example for you about this conversation of consolation and being a part of an authentic Christian community. I'm not sure if you heard about this or not, but just yesterday, uh, in, during the storms, 
There was a freak lightning strike that hit Hawk Creek Lutheran Church in Sacred Heart, Minnesota. It started a fire and destroyed the entire church. This building, this, this faith community that some members have been in for all of their lives. This building was built in 1874. It was a, it was a, a structure that, that, that symbolized Christ's presence in the community, and it was destroyed. And, and now it's really easy, I think, for those of us who are, are passionate about our faith and have come to really love our church, to put so much faith into our building. And we forget that our building is a, a beautiful structure given to us for, for following the mission of God. But it's not the most important gift that we've been given. This is what the pastor said after a reporter asked him about what, it, what, what were they going to do. And he said, We lost our church building, but we didn't lose a single member of the church. And that's what really counts for us. We're, we're blessed with a beautiful building. And yeah, we, we have some floor issues that we need to address, and we even have some other things we need to work on. And we'll get those things accomplished. But what's most important for us is to know that we are called to be an authentic Christian community, to be real about who we are and who calls us to live out our vocation as Christians in a world that needs to hear it, in a world that just writhes in pain as we pay attention to the news and all the things that are happening around us. This church in Sacred Heart is an example for us of how we are not to put our stock in things, but instead put our trust in God and work together as God's people. Let us pray. Lord God, on this day that we recognize the gift of community, we pray that you help us to be a community of faith, that you help us to be authentic and real to those who we meet, that we welcome the stranger, that we feed the poor, that we are genuine in our pain, and that we are genuine in our comfort. Help us to follow you. Help us to guide, be guided by your words and to listen as you put people in our paths to care for. Give us strength to do those things. And Lord, we pray for the faith community and Sacred Heart as they continue to uh, plan for the future. Give them wisdom and guidance and console them as they mourn. We pray this all in your precious son's name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to sing together if you but trust in God to guide you. <laughs>